Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our next episode of Presbyterians Connected. Presbyterians Connected is a uh, program that I've been trying to facilitate where we reach out to brothers and sisters in Christ around our presbytery, uh, hearing stories about what's going on and um, the different challenges that this um, quarantine, but also um, more recent events have affected on our individual and very specific um, congregations and communities. And um, this week, I am delighted that I have a um, very powerful and um, impressive guest and Pastor Rich Blood, who is the pastor at Pioneer Parish um, way up north. So welcome, Rich. Good to be with you, Chris. Yes, it's um, it's great to have you. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, Rich is a former moderator and um, an esteemed colleague and one of those people who you always love to have in the room uh, during a meeting because uh, he has that wonderful quality of um, speaking his mind, especially when other people wish he wouldn't. So it's... Um, it's fabulous to have you, Rich, and I'm going to start us off uh, with a quick prayer, and, um, and then we can get into how things are going. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for this day, for our opportunity to gather together um, using the tools that are given to us in this age to reach out, to encourage, but also to listen. Lord God, I pray on this day that you would bless this time that it would tell us more about our brothers and sisters from different areas, but also that we would be blessed and hear good news of the work that you are doing. Lord God, we pray all these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. So Rich, like I said, you are joining us and you are the pastor of the Pioneer Parish. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, your community? Where is Pioneer Parish? And and who is Richard Blood? Okay. Pioneer Parish is a group of four congregations in Northwest Wisconsin. I'm a pastor of Pioneer Parish. Being that we have four congregations, we, really, we can't, one person can't serve them all on a Sunday morning. So we also have a, a CRE, Leslie Anderson, who works mm -hmm. with us. And then Amanda Keppers, who is the, Presbytery office person also worked with us as well. The Pioneer Parish, the congregations are South of Superior, Lake Nebagaman, Brule, and St. Croix Presbyterian in uh, Gordon. And if you look at where people actually live, that means we've got an area of about 3,000 square miles. Um, a, a guy visiting from Northern Ireland asked me one day how we function and what we did and he said oh so you're the presbyterian pastor for a, an area the size of northern ireland <laughs> that's kind of that's that's kind of how it is and it kind of it speaks to our challenge at this point to trying to function in the midst of this pandemic and quarantine kind of situation because we're so spread out that making anything work well has been a real challenge for us not only are we uh, all semi-rural at least, but we don't always have good internet coverage out there. And a lot of our people are actually quite low tech. So when we tried to decide how we were going to respond in this time when we were shut down, we basically went right to paper because it's, it was the way we could reach the most people. Mm -hmm. So we started we started sending out all of our worship materials in printed form and very quickly just mailing everything every week. And then after that, started to try to do what so many have done effectively um, in doing Facebook and YouTube video and that kind of thing. And the response has been actually very good. I, I was kind of surprised because I didn't, I wasn't sure that anybody would be accessing what we did online but there's been more more than you would think anyway actually more um, more views than we have in person people in person in the pews on sundays yeah 
so it's you know it it I think it threw everyone at first and trying to decide how to respond to it and how how not to to panic and and stay connected through everybody at first but there has been a, a sense of settling into this whole different kind of routine and um, I mean definitely missing the the personal contact as far as I'm concerned you can't you can't do church online you can't do church paper wise for any length of time because church is so much about the connections we have with each other you know churches churches that that one touch an elderly person who's living alone may get in the course of a week one positive interaction that way and you just can't do that online but we are we are as I said, settling in, I think, and adapting to it. Um, ministries have continued. We, the, the food shelf ministry has continued. There's a group of us actually who have been um, doing work, a, a work project for a, a family in the parish with some property that just plain needed to be rebuilt. And it's, it's one of those situations where we can do it responsibly with distancing and that kind of thing. So ministry has certainly continued. And actually, I, I got a call, I think it was last Sunday, from a woman who she and her husband have a, a dairy farm. And she was saying, you know, my husband, who I often can't make it to church because he's tending the cows, my, my husband feels more connected than ever because we can sit down we can go through the worship materials and, and we can, uh, we can sit and discuss them. And I've had really good conversations based on, on that kind of thing. So, you know, it's different, but it's working. Yeah. That's, that's one of the um, amazing things that I think I've heard from pretty much all of our colleagues in some way or another is that, the situation stinks, the situation presents challenges, the situation changes a fundamental nature of the church, but the church continues and mm -hmm. the God's presence and God's work is not what we are left without in these days. No. And it's so great to hear, um, you know, people step up like that and really um, it, it affirms that we're more than the institutional church. Um, Absolutely. And, and even, even the connectedness issue, I look at our various congregations, and there are at least groups within those congregations that are on the phone together every day, you know, that are there supporting each other and praying for each other. The church hasn't ceased to be, even though right now we can't be together. Right. 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 And that's the, the strength that we have, um, I would say, especially as Presbyterians, but it, it definitely crosses over denominational lines, is the, the connected nature that we do have, even in a time of disconnect um, and drawing on each other for our needs, our, our, even our desires to connect with one another um, very interesting and unique ways um, are being developed that I think will enhance our ministries going forward when we gain back some of our more regular tools. Um, and that's been really cool. Um, speaking of Stronger Together, um, it's, it's one of those things that the other crisis that has come up in uh, recent days, although has been with us for ever um, is all the protests and demonstrations and um, trying to elicit change for how we treat our fellow man, most specifically in this case, uh, African-Americans in these days. And, and I, I wondered if um, you had anything to share about um, in your area, in your specific 3,000 square mile area, what do you see as the response um, to some of these larger national questions, but also how do you feel like the church is maybe responding to those particular issues um, outside of the quarantines issues? We live in, in something of a white Northern European ghetto up here. Um, 
we have very few people of color in our congregations. There are probably more Native Americans in the area than, than anywhere else or anyone else, but we haven't necessarily done a particularly good job of, of crossing those boundaries. I, I do think that um, we as the church absolutely, absolutely need to step up and be heard in the present situation. Theologically, you know, the, we can think of the church as a, a collection of individual believers, but that's not ever what the church was intended to be. The church, the church is meant to be a body, the body of Christ, that together, together is a witness to the unity that God intends for all creation. And certainly between groups within that, that piece. So if we don't find ways to step up, be it, you know, through our, our presence to the extent that we can with our brothers and sisters, um, our willingness to speak up and be heard, to protest alongside of those who are hurting. If we don't find ways to be engaged with the broader questions of unity in our culture, we become irrelevant. So it is, it is ours to try to find ways to step up and be involved, whether it's, whether it's prayer, whether it's um, getting down to a, to a uh, protest in the Twin Cities or Madison or wherever the case it may be, um, whether it's writing to our representatives, whether it's pushing for prosecution, when we see things like, like police misconduct, mm -hmm. we, the church, need to be there. We need to find ways to be there, even when we may, we may not be in physical proximities where it's easy to do that. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to... Um... I'm going to throw a, a curveball at you real quick, um, and it's just because I think so highly of you, but a common um, phrase or something that I've heard in these last few days is the importance of the division between church and state. Mm -hmm. And um, how does one navigate that particular question in thinking about the church's responsibility to critique slash uh, comment on what the state is doing um, for the people. I fully believe in principle in the separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. uh, I also believe, however, that one of the fundamental roles of the church is to be the conscience of the nation, to speak up, to speak truth to power. We, we cannot simply say, no, that the, the secular sphere is over here and the state is, is in a different world. We have to mind our own P's and Q's. That's, that's not what the church was ever called to be. The church right. was always called to speak truth to power, to, to use the influence we have, not, not uh, necessarily a legal influence, not a coercive influence, but to use the influence that we do have to speak the gospel into our communities and into our civic affairs and if speaking the gospel into our our civic affairs doesn't include speaking up for the oppressed i have no idea what it does include right right no that's that's such a great answer because it's it's um the i think the concept of the separation of powers is supposed to be that the church shouldn't seek to gain office in the state and the state shouldn't tell the church what they can and cannot say. And that is the division as opposed to not really paying attention to the other one. Uh, no, the world isn't, the world is not divided into religious and, and secular. That's not the way God made this world. <laughs> and, and we need to be speaking out to secular issues. Yeah. And, and I also want to point out, too, I, I really liked what you said about um, Native Americans in your area and maybe the church's um, lack of maybe reaching out into that community. And maybe in an area like yours with um, 
uh, not a very strong population of African Americans, this situation can teach us to reach out to minorities and people who maybe we typically don't associate with and say, this is a reminder that we have an obligation as the church to do that, to love and support and care for whoever is in our community. Um, take it as a reminder for those things. So something I hadn't thought of is the influence that this might have on our relationships with other groups besides African Americans. So that's a good word for us today, I think, Rich. <laughs> Amen and amen, and hopefully it is a, it's a wake up call on a lot of fronts. Yeah, yeah, you know we've seen these protests before. Um, this one feels different, and and I hope, and I would like to do my part that real change comes from it. Um, and and I know you wish that as well. Um, I want to thank you, Rich. Thank you so much for joining us today and uh, sharing a little bit of how things are in uh, Pioneer Parish, but also uh, words of wisdom for us going forward, no matter what challenges we're facing, quarantines or, um, you know, human worthiness um, all combined. It's always a blessing to talk to you and, um, and thank you. Great to talk to you, Chris. Peace and blessings on your work. Thank you. Let me give a short blessing uh, specifically for Pioneer Parish today. Um, and if you're hearing it, know that this blessing uh, goes out to you as well. Let us pray. Dear God, I ask this day that you watch over um, Pioneer Parish, that this um, vehicle of your grace would be blessed to do your work now as it has so many times in the past. Lord God, we are grateful when we see you working among us and you calling us to different ministries that um, are all over the place. But I ask in this particular day that you bless um, Pastor Richard Blood, that you bless Leslie Anderson, that you bless all the congregants, and that you give them a call that they cannot ignore, that they feel the power of the Holy Spirit going through them as they seek after the welfare of their neighbors. And Lord God, may we bear witness to what they do and take it as encouragement that we can do the same. Lord God, we place ourselves, our lives, and our futures in your hands. And in all these things, we pray in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Thanks again, Richard. And remember that these episodes, um, I try to have them come out every week. So make sure you share this um, on your own churches, uh, social medias and websites. And if you have any particular questions or, um, or you would like to be interviewed on this, let me know. And, um, and hopefully you are doing well. But if you're not, give someone a call because we're ready to help each other out. Peace of Christ be with you.